Most of us will be familiar with the film Brave, which details a Scottish princess called Merida, her independent attitude, and her relationship with her mother. The film looks fantastic and has a distinctly Scottish feel, but were any elements of Brave actually inspired by history? In this video, we will break down the historical details of Disney's Brave. The film has many fantastical elements to it, which come from Scottish mythology. The Will of the Wisps that Merida encounters are actually straight from Scottish folklore. Anyone traveling at night might spot eerie lights in the dark, and these were named wisps. The legend may have stemmed from older Celtic tales, and stories of them are also found in Irish, Welsh, and English folklore. They were usually considered fairies, mischievous spirits, or the ghosts of the dead. Stories about the Will of the Wisp vary, and while some feel they light the path and can lead you to treasure and riches, others believe they intend to lead weary travelers to their deaths. One myth depicts them as similar to banshees and that they are a bad omen or a sign of an impending tragedy. A Christian slant on the myth says they are souls that cannot enter heaven or hell and are destined to walk the earth forever. Science, however, has another theory. As the sightings of these lights usually occur near marshland, bogs, or swampy areas, the lights are caused by gases released by decaying organic matter. When some gases, like phosphine, are oxidized, they can emit a faint glow, which has been mistaken for ethereal lights. Stone circles also played an important role in ancient Scotland, although the reason they were built remains a mystery. Scotland was first settled over 12,000 years ago and these prehistoric peoples erected the stone circles that still stand today. They are thought to have been social gathering places, burial grounds, or for ceremonial reasons. Although as no records exist for their purpose, we can only speculate as to why they were erected. At the time that Brave is set, these monuments would have already been ancient, and they were likely seen as ominous places. There are around 16 stone circles within the Scottish borders the oldest being the gigantic stones of Stennis on the Orkney Islands. The circle was constructed 5,000 years ago and originally consisted of 12 stones of up to 6 meters, of which only 4 remain today. Other stone circles include Calanay Standing Stones on the Isle of Lewis, dubbed Nafit Brige, or the False Men, in the 17th century. It was these stones that inspired the stone circle in Brave. The witch in Brave may have been inspired by Nick Nevin, who was depicted as a witch or a fairy queen in Scottish folklore. Another possibility is the Kalyak, which roughly translates to old woman or hag. Nick Nevin was first mentioned in a poem from 1585, but she was likely a well-known figure from oral folklore. Both the Kalyak and Nick Nevin are said to be able to transform the landscape around them, a little like how the witch in Brave transforms her shop. An element that features heavily in the film is transformation with the legend of Mordu and Merida's mother's metamorphosis into a bear. While there are no Celtic legends that exactly match this one, there is plenty of Celtic mythology about bears and animal transformations. Shapeshifters in Scottish folklore are usually linked to water, and the main types are Selkies and Kelpies. Selkies live in the sea and are seals that can remove their animal skin to take the form of a human. According to the folklore, they are beautiful. If you steal their sealskin, they must remain human and live. However, if they ever get their sealskin back, they will forsake any family they may have formed while in human guise and return to the sea. Kelpies are supernatural horses that live in locks, pools, and rivers, and they can take human form but are usually given away by waterweed that is tangled in their hair. There aren't many surviving Scottish myths about bears, but there used to be large populations of brown bears that roamed Scotland. However, it is believed that they went extinct in Scotland through overhunting. There is a Scottish fairy tale called The Brown Bear of the Green Glen, in which a helpful talking bear aids a young prince, but it bears no resemblance to the story in Brave. Pardon the pun. The bear theme in Brave may have been inspired by an ancient Celtic goddess called Artio, who is often depicted as a bear, as her name stems from the old Celtic word for bear. She may even be based on an older prehistoric deity as bear bones have been found delicately arranged in caves across Europe, and bear carvings and designs are common throughout the Celtic world. Artio is the goddess of wildlife, abundance, and transformation. Bears are often associated with shape-shifting and change, as females go into hibernation pregnant 
and emerge in the spring with new life and new wisdom. When Christianity gained popularity in Europe, many older pagan symbols and holidays were amalgamated into the church to encourage people to convert. Some believe that Artio was transformed into St. Ursula, as her name is the Latinized form of the Saxon word Ursel, meaning she-bear. Perhaps the most telling piece of evidence is that St. Ursula's feast day is the same as Artio's, October 21st. Historical events may have inspired the legend of Mordu, but they weren't Scottish. The story somewhat mirrors the succession of King Clovis, a Frankish king and essentially the first king of France. He expanded Frankish territory by defeating the last Roman official in Gaul and fought off the Visigoths in the southwest. Clovis had four sons, between whom he divided his kingdom when he died in 511 CE. The Frankish territories were split based on tax revenue rather than land mass. The sons competed with each other and their own offspring until only one survived, Clotar I, who united the Frankish territories under his rule. Clotar was the youngest of Clovis's sons and murdered his own nephews to gain a share of his brother Clodomir's lands. Clotar was a brutal ruler who even ordered the death of his rebellious son Cram along with the rest of Cram's family. Although he didn't turn into a bear, it is easy to see similarities between this story and the one that Queen Eleanor tells Merida. One mythical element of Brave that has no relation to Scottish folklore is the firefalls. While this phenomenon does exist, it is actually in Yosemite National Park and not Scotland. The firefalls is a seasonal occurrence that only happens in February on the eastern edge of El Capitan. If conditions are right and just enough snow has fallen and melted to allow the water to flow down the rock's edge for a few minutes before sunset, if the sun hits the water at the right angle, the waterfall can look like fire tumbling down the cliff. But there is more to brave than a basis in Scottish myths. The scenery in the film is inherently Scottish, down to the birch and Scots pine trees and the Cairngorm granite. An interesting detail in Brave gives us a clue about the time period in which it is set, and that is the chess set we see Queen Eleanor using. The pieces are called Lewis chess pieces and are molded after real chess pieces found as a part of the large hall buried at the beach at Uig in Lewis, Scotland. Historians believe that the set was made in Trondheim, Norway, and the pieces are carved from walrus ivory and the tooth of a sperm whale. They have been dated to the late 12th or early 13th century. Therefore, the film is likely set around this time. But not everything in Brave is rooted in historical accuracy. The food eaten in the film is pretty much would have been eaten by Scottish royalty in the 12th century, as the staples were meat, fish, fruit, grain, and vegetables. However, the iced biscuits that Merida's brothers are so obsessed with would not have been found at even the fanciest of medieval banquets. Known as Empire Biscuits, they are popular in Scotland today and were originally called Linzer Biscuits, as the recipe came from Austria. The name was changed to Empire Biscuits after the First World War. While most of the ingredients could have been sourced in the 12th and 13th centuries, candied fruit was invented in the 14th century, and icing sugar wasn't developed until the 17th and 18th centuries. Another anomaly is the use of a fork to eat with, as they weren't really common in the West until the 14th century. The costumes are exceptionally historically accurate and detailed, although they too borrow inspiration from different periods. For example, tight-laced corsets weren't worn until the late 14th century. One of the film's main focuses is the competition for Merida's hand in marriage. During the medieval period, strategic betrothals at a young age were very common, especially amongst royals and the nobility. However, these were usually arranged entirely by the parents, who married off their children when they were as young as eight. As depicted in the film, these unions were more about political stability than love. During jousts and tournaments, knights sometimes asked for a favor or token from a courtly lady, but they did not usually fight to win the lady's hand in marriage. Being a fantasy film, we can't expect total historical accuracy from Disney's Brave, although the look of the film gives an authentic feel of medieval Scotland. But what was Scotland like in the 12th century? After the Roman departure from England in the 5th century, Scotland was made up of separate settlements and kingdoms, but by the 9th century, the Scots had formed a single cultural identity. The Scottish economy was primarily agricultural, and they traded with continental Europe and Norway. One of the most powerful Scottish kings, King David I, ruled Scotland early in the 12th century. 
he reorganized Scottish Christianity, issued the first Scottish royal coinage, and rebuilt castles that went on to form the first Scottish burghs, including Edinburgh, Stirling, Berwick, and Roxborough. David's successors, particularly Alexander III of Scotland, ushered in a period of peace and prosperity in Scotland. Alexander consolidated royal power in Scotland, fought off a Norwegian invasion, and brought the Hebrides under Scottish rule. However, he died without an heir when he was on his way to celebrate his new wife's birthday. On March 18, 1286, Alexander rode out into the dark and stormy night. He never arrived at his destination and was found the next day lying on the beach with a broken neck, having fallen from his horse. A period of intense conflict with England followed, known as the Anglo-Scottish Wars or the Wars of Scottish Independence. So, to sum up, while the writers and animators of Brave definitely drew inspiration from the Scottish landscape and folklore, the story doesn't have much to do with actual Scottish history. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about Scotland, check out our book, History of Scotland, A Captivating Guide to Scottish History, The Wars of Scottish Independence, and William Wallace. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you found the video captivating, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.